Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to show you a quick demonstration on limiting reactants. I'm going to show you visually how we can tell if we have limiting reactants and then also show you the math behind some of it. Uh, hopefully by the time we're done you'll see why chemists use stoichiometry in order to actually do some of this stuff. It saves us a huge amount of time. So a quick review for limiting reactants. Uh, is we need to know what a limiting reactant is. So remember, a limiting reactant is the ingredient, it's the reactant in a chemical reaction that runs out first. So we didn't measure things correctly, or we just mixed a whole bunch of stuff together, or whatever, and one of those reactants runs out. And what that means is that limits, determines how many times the reaction can happen. The other thing in there is your excess reactant, and an excess reactant are the other ingredients or the other reactants that are leftovers. We had more of those than we needed, and the reaction stopped because something ran out and some of those are left over. Uh, so today the reaction that we're going to do is the reaction of magnesium metal uh, with hydrochloric acid, that's HCl, and when it reacts it produces a salt, magnesium chloride, which stays dissolved in liquid, and it produces hydrogen gas. Um, so what we're going to do today is, if you see my screen here, uh, in each of these containers, each of these three flasks, I have 25 milliliters of liquid. So you can see there is a little bit of liquid in here. That liquid is the HCl, the hydrochloric gas. In each of these balloons, we have magnesium powder, and the amount of magnesium powder is given to us on the tape. So I have 0.3 grams in the first balloon, 0.6 in the middle one, and 1.2 grams of magnesium in the third. The problem with this reaction is you can see it reacting, but it doesn't have any colors or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to our reaction what's called an acid indicator. So the one we're going to use is litmus. Litmus is an indicator that changes color based on whether or not acid is present or absent. So what the first thing we want to do is we want to look at what is the acid going to look like if there is acid left, or what does the indicator look like? So I'm going to put a squirt or two of indicator into each of these containers. Again, each of these has 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride, HCl, which are all different ways of saying the same thing. So they all have the same amount of acid in them, right? And when you see that, this indicator, if there is any acid in our liquid, it will have that pinkish, reddish color. Okay? Now, think about this. As this reaction happens, okay, the magnesium powder that we're going to add is going to react with the HCl. And when we're done, we don't have HCl on our product side. However, that's only true if we have enough Mg to react with all the HCl. So what we need to be looking at is what color will this liquid be in these containers if there is any acid left over, any of the HCl. Now, I already have the magnesium powder. I put it in the balloons. One, I'm using balloons because it'll trap the gas. Two, it's an easy way for me to add the powder without making a huge mess. So here's the first one. Hopefully that won't pop off, but we'll, we'll see. Here's the second one. See, that one's reacting a lot more. It has more magnesium. Again, keep in mind, all of these have the exact same amount of acid in them. Okay, I'm going to move my camera view here. You can see, okay, mix them up a little bit. We still have a bit of that 
reaction happening. First one now looks like it is pretty much done, right? Second one, so I'm going to hide that, is also pretty much done. And third one, still really, really cloudy. But now notice here what we see. According to what we had, if there is litmus in our mixture that is in contact with acid, what color should it be? It should be that pink. And notice the first one, what must still be left over in our container? It must have some acid because it's pink. And the second one, it's less pink, but there is definitely a pinkish tinge to that liquid. So both of these must have some acid left over. Well, this last one here has kind of a purplish hue to it. It's totally changed color. Well, what does that mean? That means all of the acid has been used up. That litmus, when we added the litmus, when it has no acid to come in contact with, it has that purplish color. So, what do we do with this? How can we tell what is the limiting reactant? Well, when we look at the reactant side, if there is HCl left over, any HCl left over in our containers, right? Any HCl, it should be pink. So which ones have HCl? Well, the first one must have HCl in it, and the second one must also have HCl in it, what must have run out? Well, there must no longer be any magnesium powder. There is no more magnesium in either of those. Why? Well, because they turned into their products. We created magnesium chloride, which is colorless, and we created hydrogen gas. That's why the balloons inflated. Now notice also the size of the balloon. We can also look at the products. Okay, hydrogen is a gas. Well, looking at this, we can see that the amount of gas produced is different in all of these. And the reason for that is because more reactions happened. Okay, so this tells us in these two containers, magnesium must be the limiting. Because if it runs out, there isn't any of that left over. Okay. And in this one, it's the exact opposite. There's no HCl left, but there must be some magnesium left in there. So this then is the excess and then the HCl is what limits. Okay, in the first ones what must be the excess? It must be the HCl because there is HCl left over. That's what excess and that's what limiting means. So there is an experiment that visually shows you how that happens. But let's look at the math. This is why we would actually use stoichiometry. So looking at some numbers, we have the following. Okay, each of these has the same amount of HCl, but each of them has a different amount of magnesium. Well, let's do some stoichiometry to figure out how much stuff we actually have. So if I do this, I'm actually going to start with the HCl because they all have the same amount. So I can do one calculation for all of them. Each of these has 25 milliliters of HCl. What you need to know is that the concentration is 3.0 capital M. Well, think about what did that mean? That capital M is molarity. So we need to figure out how much moles HCl is actually in there. Because remember, our chemical equations are actually talking moles. Our recipe has to be in the unit of moles. We can't have grams, we can't have milliliters, we have to have 
moles. It's one mole of Mg mixed with two moles of HCl will make one mole of MgCl2 and one mole of H2. So we need to know how many moles is this? Well, that's a molarity calculation. So we say, okay, we know that the concentration is three molar. The equation for molarity is moles over liters. So we're going to say moles of HCl over, and notice I said liters, not milliliters. So I have to remember to convert 25 milliliters into liters, and that will give me 0 0.025. Okay, on my calculator then, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0 0.025 to get me my answer. We have... 0 0.075 moles of HCl. So each of these has 0 0.75 moles of HCl. Okay, what about for the magnesium? Well, for the magnesium now, I, need, I have grams. And if I want to find moles, how do I find moles from grams? Well, I use a molar mass. So I go to my periodic table and I look at magnesium. Okay, so we look at that and say, okay, what does that 24.31 number mean? That is telling me how many grams I have per one mole. Well, what do I actually have? I have 0 0.3 gram in the first one. Well, let's set it up, do a conversion. I am going to multiply that. I know I have, hmm, 24.31 grams per mole, but I want grams to cancel, so that 24.31 grams has to go on the bottom, one mole on top. When I solve for that, I get 0 0.012 moles, but what is it moles of? Magnesium. Okay. Now I need to do the same thing for the other ones. So on the other ones, same math, same element, except I have a different starting mass. I have 0 0.6 grams times 1 mole over 24.31 grams. And when I solve that, what do I get? When I do some rounding, 0 0.025 moles of mg. Okay, same thing for the other one, except I have 1.2 grams. I'm going to multiply that. One mole over 24.31 grams. And when I solve for those, again, after doing some rounding, 0 0.050 moles of mg. How does this help me figure out why in the first two, what was limiting? Our magnesium was limiting. And we had extra HCl. And why is the third one purple? Because we had limiting of the acid. And we had excess of the Mg. How does this show me that? Well, here's where your stoichiometry comes in. Remember, stoichiometry is just using ratios. And because all of these have the same number of moles of HCl, I'm actually going to use HCl to do my math. Look at our equation. It's on the left side of your screen there. We know that we have 0 0.075 moles of HCl. C, L in each of these. What this chemical equation is telling me is that it takes two moles of HCl to react with every one of the magnesium. Well, why is this important? Because now we can figure out how many moles of HCl, excuse me, how many moles of magnesium will 0 0.075 moles of HCl react with. And it's just a simple conversion problem using stoichiometry. That's all we do. We can say that we know that one mole of magnesium will react with two moles of HCl. 
Well, why did I put the two on the bottom and the one on the top? Well, remember when you're canceling, you need to have the unit cancel. And this is where it's really important to have the chemical formula because this number is moles of HCl. It's not moles of magnesium. And so I need to have the moles of HCl on the bottom. When you solve for that, when you figure out what that means, it gives you this number. Now, what is that? 0 0.0375 of what? Well, that's moles of mg. Why is that important? Well, that tells us how many moles of magnesium metal the acid can react with. You have enough acid to react with 0 0.0375 moles of magnesium. Well, let's go back to our flasks. How many moles of magnesium do they have? In flask one, we have how many? Go back to your calculations, 0 0.012 moles. Right? Well, why was there still excess HCl? Because we have enough acid to react with 0 0.0375 moles of magnesium. But we only had 0 0.012 moles of magnesium. We had more acid than we needed. Or another way to look at that, we have not enough magnesium to react with all of our acid. So the magnesium limits how much this reaction can happen. Acid in excess, we have extra of it, okay? Flask two, how many moles of Mg did we have in flask two? We had 0 0.025 moles of Mg. Well, how much acid do we have? We have enough to react with 0 0.0375. Well, notice this is still smaller. In other words, we have more acid than we need. We have enough acid to react with this much Mg, but we only have this much, 0 0.025 is smaller. That's why in our second flask, Mg is limiting. It ran out. We had extra acid, HCl. Well, then we get to our third flask, and here we have a big change. Our third flask, how many moles of magnesium do we have? Well, we go back to our calculation, and we had this many moles. Well, why is this one now suddenly different? Why does this one have now no more acid in it, no more HCl? Well, because we only had enough acid to react with 0.375 moles of Mg. 0 0.05 is bigger than that. So what happens is all of our acid is chewing up the magnesium and it's creating the new products. Once we have chewed up this many moles of magnesium, suddenly we don't have any more HCl in there to react. The reaction stops. It's not working anymore. However, we still have magnesium. And I don't know if you can see it, but along the top edge here, there's this dark line. That dark line is actually extra magnesium powder that hasn't been reacted. Magnesium is a very dark metal. It's a very dark powder when it's ground up. Okay, that is the excess magnesium. Notice no pink, no red, which means there's no HCl. Now, something to think about. Here's why we use stoichiometry as chemists. It took me about 40, 45 minutes to mix all the chemicals I needed to do this reaction. It took us less than 10 minutes to do the actual calculations. And that's actually because I was taking a long time and trying to explain things. Stoichiometry saves us time. That's why we use it, and that's why we love it. I hope you do too. Limiting reactions, ladies and gentlemen. If this video worked for you, if it made sense, please give me a thumbs up. Um, otherwise, feel free also to leave some comments, whether good or bad. I actually appreciate the constructive comments.
criticism, please just make the comments something I can use. Enjoy. See you all later.